See, that felt nice. That felt nice. That felt that felt better. See, it's it's it time. Now it's like it never happened. It's yeah, like, like it, it never happened. Never happened. It's it's time, buddy. It's time. It's time. Yes, Bunny, my friend, it is time once again for all of us here on the Pope on Film podcast to twerk our way into the third part of our big shoe. And it is said third part, wherein we finally and eventually get around to discussing our low-cost, super effective, or your money-back movie of the week. And this week, we say goodbye to our summer of yo with a look at the ninth movie in the Rocky series, The Rocky List, Creed Which is a, the official way to pronounce it. Yes. Also known as Creed 3. Creed 3 is what the 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 real um, the fake fans call yeah. this movie. Creed 3. The real fans know that it's Creed because it's the most Hispanic because of um, whatever that one Mexican dude is. I was just excited to see a Mexican in a in one of these uh, Rocky movies. You're talking and about, now... You're talking about plot device Guerrero. Yes. 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 So here we are, 47 years removed from the first Rocky movie, and here we are watching the ninth movie in the Rocky series without Rocky in it. Funny, give us your thoughts on this rocky list movie. Does Stallone's absence help or hurt the film? Oh, well, since this is my my favorite of the Creed movies, I would have to say, fuck Stallone. Yeah. He had an idea for, uh... It, it, originally, this film was going to feature uh, Adonis Creed fighting the son of Clubber Lang. Yes. Because apparently just all of the characters have sons and everyone gets a shot. They decided not to do that and thank God they didn't because that would have sucked. Yes. But I did feel that this story was a bit familiar. This felt like a... They didn't try to remake... Rocky 3, but they had Rocky 3 in mind. Yeah. That's what this movie felt like. Because, like, oh, uh, here's this... Uh, Damien had the eye of the tiger in this. Yes. Oh, but you know what Creed had? He had that... Uh, my favorite part of the movie? Um was uh, uh, Sherlock Holmes. Creed has Sherlock Holmes powers now. Yes. You remember that pit fight in that one Robert Downey Jr. Sherlock Holmes movie where he sees everything in slow motion and it's like, ooh, I sense a weakness here. And then I can... Like, that's what Creed has, like, Spidey sense now. Yes. And can sense things and I, I thought that that was pretty great and also there was a scene where like oh no um things are getting pretty dramatic and Creed does go on a Rocky-esque emotional drive yes and uh I was kind of hoping for like the music of Survivor to start playing and make it a an, an official I need to think about my entire career montage, but it, that didn't happen, sadly. No, no. There was no dramatic Rocky IV driving montage, which I think makes uh, uh, just sports movies better, is this, an emotional driving montage. Yeah. This movie had the least amount of contrived yeah. bullshit. It had actual had to, stakes. The most that we actually had to get over was 
Oh, here is your long-lost friend who was like a brother to you that you've never mentioned until right the fuck now. Mm-hmm. So once but it you was got still... over that, it yeah. was it was pretty smooth sailing from there. And hey, I I don't mind I don't mind John Majors being all pissed off. I mean, he never wrote him while, while he was in the penitentiary or anything like that. Just like he never went to see Plot Convenience Guerrero in the fucking hospital. This was his boy. Didn't visit him once. And that's going to start the 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 new series. Yeah. It's going to all be all Guerrero all the time. So this is a 2023 movie, so it's new. It costs $75 million to make, and it made $275 million. So, Bunny, you might hate this, but... Uh, Michael B. Jordan has said in interviews that a fourth Creed film is happening for sure, and also that spin-offs are being considered. Well, because you know his daughter is going to be boxing. Yeah. Okay, because I already have some ideas for some spin-offs. Number one, a Rocky Jr. show about his two turtles. Yes. They can talk, and they also box other animals. <laughs> uh, I These turtles like, are just like that. I, I would like to see a, a more supernatural or super horror uh, kind, of, kind of Creed movie in the future, which would be The Return of Paulie's Ghost. Nice. Oh, no. Paulie's ghost in is stuck inside of one of the ribs from the freezer. Yeah. And now Rocky has to carry this rib these ribs around. And it's like Rocky and the Rib Ghost. Thursdays at nine on NBC. Like I think like like he, he haunts he haunts the ring. Nobody has ever actually seen him, but but every now and then you'll have the smell of bourbon cigars and pork farts. <laughs> he haunts the ring, and then people see the ring, and see a boxing match seven days. <laughs> seven days. So we've got a lot of spin-offs. Hollywood, give us a call. We are ready with so many spin-offs. I think the world... I don't want to know more about that guy who treated him like shit on the commercial. Yeah. <coughs> I want to know more, and, and this is for all boxing movies. They've all ignored one character that is integral to every boxing movie. And I think it's time for a very poignant look at this man. The man who handles the spit bucket during the fight. Spit bucket. I was just about to <sighs> say spit bucket. Yeah. 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 Bobby the spit bucket boy. Boom. That's a whole film. We got this down. We got it on lock. But, uh, so yeah, with, with a box office win like this for Creed III, it basically guarantees there's going to be more of these. He has legit said in interviews about exploring the Creediverse. If there's going to be a, a, a Creed for, I'm ready for your girlfriend to die, okay? I'm, What's I'm his just, wife now? Whoever. <laughs> The woman who's always with him. She's gotta go. Um. I. Okay, so if if uh, Michael B. Jordan is talking about the Creediverse, then, um. How about this? The deaf daughter 
grows up and becomes a fighter, but oh, look who had a daughter. Tommy Morrison. Uh-oh. And they have a fight like outside of a well, probably not a bar, outside of a Claire's. Yeah. <laughs> in the alley of a mall. There you go. Boom. Rocky Five. Meet you behind Part the two. GMC motherfucker. Yeah. So in this film, it's Killmonger versus Kang. I like Kang's acting in this. Yes. I really... He did a great job, and so I love all the sign language, too. That was really awesome. I mentioned this in the beginning of the podcast, but it's always difficult when you don't see a movie in theaters and you're seeing just like a copy on your computer. I don't know if there was any subtitles for all of the um, sign language in this film, but I hope there wasn't. I hope that there's just silence there, because that would be awesome. But yeah, originally Kang was supposed to play the son of Clubber Lang, and thank God they didn't. This feels very emotional. It it felt more of, of a of a character study. I really like the emotions behind this. There were emotional stakes. And it some people had to do some actual acting. And I'm just gonna come come out and say it. I would say the end of Creed three is like my in my top five Rocky fights, maybe top four. Yeah, not bad, not bad. I just liked, especially when everyone in the stadium disappears and it's just them. Uh, I really liked that. And it started um, to be a cage match, but never became one. Yeah, you never saw the full cage. Yeah. Which was interesting. Um, I was hoping to see Mick Foley jump off of that cage, yeah. and now I won't. Very sad. Um, so high. Bunny! It, were there any yo's in this movie? I wasn't paying attention. I did not hear a single yo. So we are at... Uh, 92 for the final yoke count. Am I right there? Yeah. 92. There are 92 yo's in the Rocky franchise. Look and, at that. And, we have finally... It spent... It, it took us the entire summer. And Creed 3 is tied with Boxing Helena for yo's. <laughs> there you go. Boom. Yeah, forgot about Boxing... Boxing Helena. I'm sorry. I, I'm still standing by the mispronunciation. Boxing Helena. Huh? Yes. 92. Nine. Ten point how many? Thank you for going slower that time. I really... It, okay. Hi. Hi, Bunny. Hi. <laughs> I'm doing. I'm doing great. Are, are you done mowing? Oh my God. Okay. Did we get a notice? Did we get a notice? I didn't think we did. No, we didn't. Yeah. Yeah. I I noticed her the other day walking through the side, and it felt weird because of Amber. Uh, Bunny. So we are done with the summer. We are done with our summer of yo. Uh, it was pretty... It was mostly fun. It was mostly harmless. We've had much worse summers than the summer of yo. As much as yes. I hate Polly, I'd rather be watching Polly than uh, Baby Geniuses 2. Yes. Or Recep Evadik. I actually watched every one of them. Every Rocky? Yeah. Yeah, uh, Five can still kiss my ass. I'm still pissed off at Five. Yeah. I am still so fucking pissed off at Five. Rocky Balboa was uh, surprisingly fun. Uh, so now that we are done with the summer, and now that we're getting closer to October, which is, of course, 
uh, on this podcast, the month of Buntover, it is now time for Bunny to take over the podcast. So, yes. join us next week when we begin celebrating Bunny Williams by watching... Okay. Well... It's finally time. It is finally time to pay tribute to the great Spanish director Pedro Almodovar. Okay. But because I couldn't find any of his movies that were that were not in Spanish and not subtitled, we will be doing Beasts from 20,000 Fathoms. Hell yeah! Okay. We will be okay. honoring Spanish director Pedro Almodovar all month with 50 B horror movies. Hell yeah! We're we're going to honor him with giant lizards, aliens, giant bugs, radiation. Thank you, you genius, Mr. Almodovar. Man, we are really going to be classing up the place by watching 1950s B movies to celebrate Alamandovar and his work. I, this is going to be great. This is going to be great, and I am super excited. So now I have a bunch. Uh, of, now I have a bunch of Spanish movies on my on my Plex that I can't watch. Oh yeah, I I have Volver. I have uh, All About My Mother. I have Women on the Verge of a Nervous Breakdown. And The Skin I Live In. No subtitles. Yeah, yeah have fun with that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can, can it, you it was talk a good about... lineup. But we're, we're doing Beasts from 50,000 to 20,000 Fathoms. Okay, and it's on good. Cough, it, cough, which I'm sure okay. you probably noticed. Good, good, good. Now, hold on a second. No. Yeah. Yeah. Why the microphone was so big in there? I do not know. And also, like, you put her on the poster, okay, but she's hardly in the film. Well, it's about their family. Yeah. I. You don't let him destroy what we. Who and what? Nice, nice. Uh, what? We couldn't hear that. Yeah, we couldn't, couldn't hear. Tasha. Oh, they couldn't hear you at all. That's exciting. I have no idea. No, they couldn't hear you. Yeah. Oh. I don't know. I was you should be louder. Like I'm talking about the, their child's forehead. On the promo photo that you got up there, it's hella big. But in the movie, her forehead is not that big. In the beginning of this podcast, I thought I looked uh, so pretty. But now I look at myself in that little box, and I feel like um, Joey Ramone is on hormone replacement therapy. And I don't like it. Okay. Oh, thank you, honey. She said Joey Ramone is beautiful. Uh, so that's all I've got this week for Creed. Ay, ay, ay. Do you have anything, Bunny? Regardless of her of her forehead height, I want her dead by next movie. Yeah, who's going to die next? You get to a point in the Rocky franchise where it's like, who's dying in this one? I mean... She I don't know. I don't know who died. Oh, uh, 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 Heathcliff Huxtable's wife died in this one. Yeah, his mama. Yeah. yeah. She, she, she died in this She's one. always picking a fight with him, and, like, she's not always right. And this, and the one in this one was great, where, where she's, you've got to deal with your anger issues, or whatever the fuck she was like. And I was like, 
He was fine until you came in the room. He was just mm. quietly, <laughs> sadly drinking. That's all he was doing. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what were we saying? I asked her died. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, okay, so she, you guys were putting bets on the girl dying in the next movie? Yeah, either the girl or uh, uh-huh. the, Duke the Jr. I don't okay. uh, know. Did she, like, so, going on? <clears throat> she's, she's going death. Oh. And their kid what is already death. Afraid? She's deaf and she gets brain cancer of the lungs. The lungs brains. That's exciting. Uh, the son of Duke. <laughs> hey, buddy. Uh, I think now that I'm looking back at this episode, what? No. Who said that I was high? Not me. I'm not high at all. Um, but now that I'm looking back at this episode, the highs, the lows, the ups, the downs, the ins, the outs, the all abouts, I gotta say, I think this has been a pretty decent episode of the Pope on Film podcast. It has been a damn good episode. Okay, yes. Thank you. Uh, I, 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 Eleanor's in the car? Yes. Oh. Oh, okay then. Um I I I felt the same way about the podcast, buddy. But I Bunny looks like he has melted into the couch. He has become the couch. He is one with the couch. He is the couch. And I so I am so down with that. Yes! Yeah, uh, uh, Bunny is becoming Couchy, the cousin of Cherry from Phoebe's Playhouse. Uh, I I 100% agree. I concur with your assessment, good sir. So until next week, I am one with the couch. And I am... Bloody, bloody Mei Lin, Blowing and on behalf... Thoughts? What are you doing? <laughs> I was, um, biting some of my skin. Okay. Um, and on behalf of Natasha and Eleanor and Maxwell and everybody else, I just want to say thanks for l- listening, and we will see you next week, you godless heathens. Thank you. Uh, you. I don't know how to do this. I don't know. I run out of you. I run out of ideas. And you? I agree. And you what? I agree. I scream. I scream. You scream? Don't scream. <laughs> That's cute. Uh. Do 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 cut and print. That's a wrap. I did it. <laughs>